tonight we are going to cook a really quick dinner. We are in the middle of the heat wave that I think so many of you in the US are dealing with and I really don't want to be in my kitchen for very long. So we're going to see how long this takes us. Let's see, it's, it's 4.38 and let's see how long this takes. Um, tonight we're going to be making Korean beef bowls. I have some pasture-raised ground beef here from our half beef purchase um, that we got at the beginning of the year. I also just went down to our bulk storage. I pulled up a new bag of broccoli and I got some rice for this meal. <clears throat> Ooh, I have a frog in my throat. So this broccoli is the Azure broccoli and I'll show you guys more when we start putting on a tray, but uh, this is my favorite broccoli ever <laughs> because it's really small florets. You don't have to do any extra chopping or like, it's just perfect. I love the taste and it's also perfect for little kids. Um, so we buy this all the time. And the way our storage system works, we keep a bag up here in our kitchen freezer. And then I also keep a bag down in our downstairs freezer. And so anytime we run out down there, that's when it gets put on the next Azure order. Cause sometimes it's hard to get. Sometimes it takes a couple months to get this. All right, the first thing I'm going to do before I get the stove going, I'm just gonna finish any ingredient prep. These are some green onions that I pulled out of our garden this morning. Now, this recipe, this Korean beef, is obviously made with ground beef, as I said, but we have three different Korean beef recipes that we cycle through as a family. One is really great for the winter. It uses a chuck roast, and it's a crock pot recipe, and it's so good. Um, and then another one uses shaved beef and it has peppers and onions and is a much, um, I guess kind of a fancier dish, um, but still very easy. But <laughs> shaved beef is a luxury around here, so I won't cook anything with it except for like Philly cheesesteaks until we get sick of those and then I'll branch out a little bit because we run out really quick. Okay, here we are with my mismatched trays. I need to go through our baking stuff and organize it. Um, we just, I think we lost a tray to something. I can't remember what happened. We burned something really bad and time is money. So I just, we couldn't get it off of there and I gave up and <laughs> threw it out, I think. But we are a two tray family for something like broccoli. And honestly, I don't mind having leftovers because this reheats really well for a kid lunch later this week. Um, it's just great to have prepped. And then that's one last time that we have to turn the oven on during this uh, lovely heat wave. I've sort of been beating myself up for how my tomatoes are doing. They are producing, They're, they just look sad. <laughs> they look awful. Um, but they're, they're producing and getting ripe, so it's not the worst thing ever. But then I was thinking, you know, perhaps there's something I could have done better, but really this unseasonably hot uh, month we've had is just, I think it has been brutal for them. Our peppers are okay, so that's nice. So I just do this up with a little bit of olive oil and salt. I'm sure you could play around with seasonings here add some garlic powder or whatever, and but there will be plenty of flavor in our dish. And then my kids like it pretty plain uh, if they eat it as a side. The next thing I'm gonna do is mix up the sauce. And the first thing it calls for is brown sugar. This is homemade, we just do uh, molasses with sugar. One cup of molasses to one tablespoon of sugar. Add more if you want darker brown sugar. And then here is the soy sauce. This is also from Azure. Pretty much everything I've used so far is from Azure. Um, it's the Sanjay Organic Shoyu Brewed Soy Sauce, non-GMO. All the good things, pretty clean ingredients, great taste. So we, we buy this by the case. The sesame oil. It's also nice to pick up in bulk. We don't store a ton of it because we don't use we don't use a ton of sesame oil, but I do have a backup jar or two downstairs on the shelf. 
And this is, uh, let's see, Napa Valley Naturals. I think they have a couple varieties on Azure. And we need some ginger, of course. Fresh ginger would be the thing, but um, I think this recipe is written for dry ginger just because that's what I usually use. And then it calls for a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I'm gonna tone it down just a little bit and use a fourth teaspoon, cause kids, Sometimes with a sauce like this, I will double the sauce just so that we have plenty for spooning over the rice and veggies that we serve on the side. I don't know why, but I don't feel like doing that today. I don't think it'll be totally necessary. Um, my kids aren't super into sauce, so I think, I think they won't want it. It'll just be my husband and I. Okay, great. Let's get over to the stove. I have a skillet off to the side here that you can't see just yet, but I just turned it on and it's gonna start heating up. Then I also have my rice here. I'm just gonna step over to the sink and rinse it. In it goes. I cook my rice at a one to two water ratio. I've said it a few times, I think. You're probably tired of me saying it. This is something we stock in bulk from Azure. Whenever, um, I keep two five gallon buckets. Whenever one runs out, I order another bag. Whoops. Let me dry that up before I start the stove. Man, I'm making a mess today. Okay. Let's bring that up to a simmer. This recipe calls for vegetable oil, but I just put a little avocado oil in here. That's our preferred high heat cooking oil. This is fresh garlic from our garden. I actually just did a garlic processing day. Um, I didn't record it because it's pretty mundane, um, but we just peeled all the garlic, put it in a blender with a little bit of olive oil, and then used a one inch cookie scoop to make balls of garlic on some baking sheets lined with parchment paper. And then those go in the freezer until they're solid and then they get put in double Ziploc baggies. So this is fresh from that. I kept one out for today. I'm gonna get our beef cut open because that is the next thing that's gonna go in. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get that beef in there before this starts burning. Our stove here is an electric stove and it goes from not hot to scorching just so fast and then it doesn't adjust well. I still have a little frozen pump right there. <laughs> we'll figure that out in a minute. This is one of my favorite kitchen tools. I don't know how I didn't have one for as long as I did. <laughs> but it really helps get the meat chopped up fine so there's no big chunks. And it's cheap. I think it's like five or six bucks. I wasn't sure what I was going to make for dinner tonight until about one o'clock. <laughs> so I needed something that would thaw quick. And at first I thought I was going to make something with like a top sirloin steak, but then I remembered this recipe. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to let this cook down a bit more, drain it with a paper towel, and then we'll add our sauce. My oven just beeped at me. So in go these broccoli. I don't have a set time. I usually run them at 425 and I'll start at about 12 minutes and then keep checking them. So while this is cooking up, I am looking at Azure debating stepping up to the 30 pound broccoli. I just did some quick chicken scratch and the two by five pound, that's what we normally get. That's 1643 per five pound bag. But if you switch to the 30 pound box, it's 1446 per five pounds. That's a good savings. But my fear is it's gonna come in this box and I don't have a big chunk of square or rectangular or whatever. I don't have that space in my freezers. I could probably stash, oh, but look, it says six five pound bags. Maybe I could do it. I gotta think about it. I'll let you guys know in the next Azure haul. This seems like it's done. Oh, there's a little bit of pink in there. 
part of the beauty of shopping in bulk for me is being able to save money in places like that because we buy really, I guess, high quality groceries. You know, we buy organic and grass fed and all of that. And being able to save a little money where possible um, and, and having that infrastructure to purchase like that, uh, it's really important to us. I don't think we would be able to eat the way we do if we didn't have that infrastructure um, that we've slowly put into place. I'm actually going to move it because I want this burner to cool for a second. Otherwise, it'll just hold all the heat forever. And then my rice over here, my rice over here, which you can't really see, um, it is simmering. So I am going to lower it down to a simmer. And oh, let's see. My timer is still going for my broccoli, but I usually do this for about 10 minutes. So there's seven minutes in my broccoli and I'll just do three more minutes for the rice. I'm gonna stir it up, make sure all that sugar is loose in there. These green onions off to the side here are for garnishing. So they are not gonna go in during the cooking phase. really use a spatula, but I don't want to dirty anything else tonight. I'm going to get this nice and mixed up, make sure all the sugar is incorporated. We do use the, um, oh, I don't remember what it's called. Maybe I can type exactly what's special about the sugar we get right here. Um, but it's not as processed, so it's pretty coarse, and sometimes it just takes a little more mixing to ensure that you don't have any big old clumps of sugar, but we love it. It's delicious. It makes fantastic cookies and all of that. Okay, I'm going to let that simmer and meld for just a moment. And we're pretty much done. I'm going to clean some dishes while I wait for this. All right, I'm going to check on the broccoli. It was nice and softened earlier, but still just kind of steamed. And I'm waiting for it to get some roast on it. I think that's decent. The other one's a little further behind, but I think that's okay to serve. Maybe we'll eat this tray first, and then this will be more like for a side dish for the kids. Let's turn this oven off so it stops heating up my house. Oh yeah, that has some nice crispiness to it on the bottom there. See that piece? That's nice. So let's see, it is about 5.15 now. And while this was cooking, I was able to get my whole kitchen cleaned. The whole table is set. I finished my garlic project. Not a bad little meal here. It'll get the job done quickly. Here is my setup. We've got bowls because we're all of those are dirty. So we've got um, two for us, two for the kids, one for the one-year-old who is going to throw his food across the room at some point during dinner. We have our rice our beef back there, our broccoli, scallions for serving, as well as our sesame seeds. And that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for joining. I will put the recipe in the description box, of course. And I hope everybody is doing well in the heat wave and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.